Hi everybody, welcome to our live stream. My cat Hudson is here. Thankfully he's put his tail down now. I thought I'd have to start this live stream uh, showing everybody Hudson's bottom, but he has, uh, he's having some dreamies back there, but he is on the live stream. Hello to everybody who is in the chat. We have just got a general kind of cruise Q&A today. If you have any questions for me, I'm gonna do my best to answer as many as I can. I have just got back from a cruise on a ferry. I know, I've avoided ferries my entire life, but it has, it's blown my mind and I cannot wait for you to see this. It's so bizarre, so bizarre, but I'm editing my video about it at the moment. Hopefully it'll be out uh, early next week, I think. So look out for that when it comes out. It was an experience, it was an experience. We cruised from Sweden to Finland and back just for a couple of days on a ferry that holds 2,800 passengers, if you can believe it, if you can believe that's a thing. Uh, I do not know what this is, <laughs> this piece of my hair, uh, but it is starting to go sideways now, thankfully, thank goodness. Oh, okay, Hudson's off, that's that's all you're going to get from this live stream. Hopefully you all saw him here. When people come in later and they ask where Hudson is, you can say that you have seen him. If you do have a question for me, and you can start it with question in capital letters, that would be fantastic. Just helps me, we get a lot of comments on these live streams and I'm trying to scan through them while I'm speaking, which is a really strange game to play. And it just really helps me out if I can see when they are questions. There is Sean saying the same thing. Thank you so much, Sean. And thank you to all of my moderators who are in the chat looking after this. Uh, live streams are an interesting set of skills and I wouldn't do it without my moderators. So thank you so much. Uh, hello to my mum who's in the chat. Hello to Owen. Hello to Lou who says, please smash that thumbs up button. Um, Lou, I have just written you a pod, uh, postcard actually from Sweden. Uh, my Patreon's on, on those tiers. You'll be getting those soon. I'm going to send them out. Uh, hello, Paul and Carol. It's nice to see you guys. Paul and Carol did their first live stream the other day, which was very, very good. Very, very exciting. Um, Nothing will ever be as scary as that first live stream, I promise you guys, but you did great. I was watching it on a plane and my plane was delayed. I wasn't supposed to be able to watch the live stream. I was supposed to be in the air, but it was delayed so I could watch the live stream. Uh, make of that what you will, fate or something, so I could watch it. Um, but that was me coming back from my ferry adventure. Hello to Mark. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I did have to change the kind of link of this live stream. So I did lose... Uh, we had a super chat on here from Richard. I wrote it down so that I didn't miss it because I did lose it. Sorry about that, Richard. And he has a question that says, uh, are my cruise companions generally self-guiding and self-entertaining? Um, because four of his last cruises were with friends and he got exhausted being cruise directors full time. A negative test today, yay. That is amazing. So uh, I think most of my friends are pretty self-sufficient or they know if they're coming on a cruise with me that I may have to, you know, I may say, oh, I've got to go do this thing today or I've got to, you know, go back to the cabin to get this piece of work done. And they're fine with that. It's kind of, it kind of comes with the territory um, of coming on a cruise with me. But yes, when I cruise with first time cruisers, it's quite different. But generally, they're, they're pretty good. I don't feel like a cruise director really on, on my cruises. Uh, thank you, Tony, for my super chat. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, terrible day for the right to choose in the US. Yes, uh, let's enjoy some cruise chat with Emma. You look great. Thank you so much, Tony. Yes, we do these live streams every single week here. And if you just want to pop in on them, it's a nice way to kind of wind down the week, I think. And I try and provide just a, you know, friendly, happy space. So yes, cruise boys. Hello, cruise boys. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, no, Sean says that Lou, it will be the same fate as the Christmas card. It won't. I promise. Well, I can't promise, but I'll try my best. Um, oh, Greg has a question. Going to cruise with us on Carnival, Dover to Rome, September 2nd. I don't think that's a question unless I'm missing something, but that sounds amazing. Have a fantastic time. Uh, my mum says that she is self-entertaining. I mean, mum has been the one entertaining me. You know, mum brought me up, so... Um, I don't really feel the need to entertain my mum. Oh, speaking of ferries, there's a bunch of Japanese travel YouTubers who take the Japanese ferries between islands. Have you seen any of those? I have not seen any of those. I've got to be honest, I have no interest in ferries before this. All of my ferry memories are being seasick, being bored. Like, it's just not something that I ever thought I'd want to do. But 
I think this trip has kind of opened my eyes to things outside of the traditional cruise ships that I think I would enjoy. Um, I did not get seasick on this ferry at, at all. It's the same size as a cruise ship. I'm sure it has the same, you know, stabilizers, same technology, but that did it kind of put my mind at ease about ferries like that. That very different though from a very, you know, a small ferry, but never say never. I'm much more kind of open to this stuff now. Um, what were your first thoughts when you boarded Symphony? My first thoughts when I read your question is Symphony of the Seas, but we're not talking about Symphony of the Seas. We are talking about the Cilia, Cilia, something like that, Symphony, which is the ferry that I went on. And my first thoughts were just, just wow. Like I, I didn't have any words for it. It's so bizarre, so bizarre because it's also familiar to me, but also so different and so strange. So I, I feel like I know how to go on a cruise now. Right. Um, but as soon as we got to the cruise port, all you had to do was scan a code, print your ticket. That's it. There's no, you know, no one's checking. Uh, you've got travel insurance or you have COVID tests or vaccines or there's not there's no paperwork there's nothing we had one qr code that gave us a ticket we walked straight on no secure security to go through nothing so things like that are very very different um in some ways it was better than a normal cruise and the customer service was better than most cruise lines the app worked better than most cruise lines but it was undoubtedly still a ferry you know some places really felt like a ferry <laughs> you'll see in the video when i show you You'll, you'll see what I mean. Some spaces are very cruise ship and some spaces are very ferry, <laughs> very ferry. Uh, cruise boys say, cruising with Emma is fab. She is relaxed and great to cruise with. Thanks so much, guys. Uh, leave that as like a little tagline for me, a little recommendation. Uh, how many decks were there on the ferry? I think there were, mm, I think there's 12 or 13. Uh, not all of them accessible, of course. I had a cabin on deck eight, which was right in the middle. Um, and there were a good few decks above us. So, yeah, maybe maybe in total of 12 or 13. You know, it's a fair size. You can compare it to, I think, Marella Discovery was the closest one that I found. So kind of a Royal Caribbean ship from the 90s um, against this ferry that was built in the 90s. Kind of the same. Yeah, really, really strange. Of course, uh, there's 450 cars and lorries on the ferry. So it's quite different. It is not the same in terms of space. Um, but it was really interesting. It was really, really interesting. Uh, are you watching D&J's Hawaii Adventures? I have not seen. I have not. Um, I've been in this edit the bubble, just editing this video. It is, I just want to get it out. There's so much I want to show you guys, but I'll catch up on everything um, as soon as I can. Um, Oh my goodness, so many questions I don't know where to pick from. If you can keep your questions shorter, like this one about how many on a ferry, it increases the likelihood of me being able to pick them because I can't stop to read, if that makes sense. I did make a purchase this week that I think is fabulous. And I don't know if anyone else does, but I bought some kids' shoes. And I want to show you these shoes, okay? Um, I think they're so funny. Okay, so these are my shoes. <laughs> uh, they're Buzz Lightyear shoes and they're children's shoes and I absolutely love them I went to see the Lightyear movie uh, the kind of Buzz Lightyear thing and these were the shoes <laughs> so they're kids ones they're in the sale but they go up to ladies size 6 so perfect absolutely love those um, in the Buzz Lightyear movie there's Buzz Lightyear and he's got a cat called Socks who's a ginger cat who looks exactly like my cat Hudson this is a balloon version of Hudson but he does um, he's, he can use his eyes as torches, he can make noises, he can talk, and that's kind of what I think Hudson is. I know he's not, he's just a cat cat, um, but it feels, it feels to me like he's like that. Um, can cruise to infinity and beyond, infinity and beyond, absolutely. Um, hello from New Zealand, hello New Zealand, amazing, Buzz Lightyear. Uh, are there any cruises where you can take your car with you? Well, this cruise that I just took from Sweden to Finland, you can take your car. It's technically a ferry. There's one ferry deck, um, one car deck, I mean. And the interesting thing for me was the car deck was labeled in the spaces by animals. So when you look to the deck plan, it would be like, oh, the camels are there. <laughs> and it's not. It's just how they recognize the cars. Um, but when I didn't know that and I saw, you know, camels on the thing, 
made me laugh. Did make me laugh. Uh, was the fare a bargain? I think so. I think I think compared to cruises, it was a bargain. But when you look at it, um, it doesn't include food. It doesn't include drinks. It doesn't include really anything. It's just your entertainment. That's free to see on the ferry and your accommodation. That's it. It's a mode of transport. Um, when I initially booked it, I booked it at 22 euros per night. I got COVID. <laughs> I had to cancel it. I had to move it. Uh, and I ended up paying 44 euros per night. So I did two nights, 88 euros, I think, 88 euros, uh, which is not too bad. It's pretty cool. Because if you go to stay on land in Sweden or Finland, it's a very expensive part of the world. So um, thank you, Jim, for my super chat. He says, now you've done a ferry cruise. Would you consider doing the ferries from Denmark um, to... Oh, Iceland. I have I didn't even know that was a thing, Jim. Absolutely, I'm up for that. We'll try that. Um being beside the cruise ferry. It's probably a very similar thing. Yeah, it really did look like a cruise ship, apart from the only kind of difference was there's not balcony cabins on it. You know, it's all kind of inward facing. Um yes. Uh, Jackie says those shoes wouldn't work for me. I wear a woman's size eleven. Yeah, kids' shoes go up to size six, which I think is the average UK woman's feet size. So I'm buying kids shoes. Uh, how long was the trip? So we just did, we did two nights on the ferry. Um, so we went into Sweden late at night and stayed just at the airport and then did two nights on the ferry. You can do, it's not like a two night cruise. You could do one night, you could do just backwards, you could do there and backwards, you can do there and back and there. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Interestingly though, because it is, I did two one night cruises, you don't need a mustard drill. Yeah, I, I will talk more about that in the video, but that was really strange. I'm so used to going on a cruise and having a safety drill. Nothing, don't need it. Um, very, very interesting, very interesting. Uh, where and when are you going on your next cruise, Emma? So I'm taking a cycling cruise, believe it or not, in July. So that's very, very soon. And I, I, I don't think I'm ready, <laughs> to be quite honest with you. It's not quite a long distance every single day, but it's this amazing company. It is a press trip. They invited me on, and I'd never even heard of them before. You know, I didn't know that this was a thing, cycling cruises. But we cycle every single day, I think 25 to 45 kilometers a day or something like that. And it just looks like so much fun. So I thought, you know, They've invited me on. I have nothing to lose. If it goes terribly, it's still a great story. And I'll give it a go was kind of my thinking. So we will see how that goes. I did start cycling again kind of before I got COVID. Then I got COVID. Then I got tired. And uh, and then I went on this ferry. So I haven't really had a chance to cycle in a while. But it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Uh, did they do a trapeze show in the promenade, like when I was crossing in 2015? No, they did not. Well, I don't know. I saw on the schedule it said something like uh, acrobatics in the central promenade. But I was in my cabin that entire time, sitting in the window that looked down into the promenade. I never saw anything. So unless I missed a trapeze act, which I don't think so, because I could hear every, you know, announcement and music and stuff. But I didn't see any because that sounds really, really cool. Uh, Justin says, how was the food? So the food was, it was like um, just being in a shopping center on land in that there's there's like a steak restaurant, Italian restaurant, seafood restaurant, fast food restaurant, buffet, all of those kind of things, but you pay for them. <laughs> it's not, there's no food included in your cruise. Um, it was kind of, uh, yeah, for the prices that you'd pay in Sweden or Finland for food, like it was the same. It's not more expensive. It's more expensive than I would pay really here, though. It's it's an expensive part of the world. Uh, thank you, Barbara, for my super chat. Um, that's very nice of you. Thank you. I can't see a message. So if I've missed it, I'm sorry. Um, but that's what it looks like to me. Uh, what video editing software do you use? At the moment, I use Final Cut Pro because I'm team Apple, team Mac, team everything like that. I'm saying this. I'm doing this live stream on Adele. So maybe not entirely team Apple, but I do edit on Final Cut Pro. Uh, I used iMovie for years and it was fine, but it just got to a point where there were things I wanted to do and things I wanted to try that I couldn't do. So. Final Cut Pro for the last couple of years, and I do really like it. So I'm not looking to change anytime soon. Oh, Lizzie, Lizzie says hello from Southampton. Uh, watching Anthem and Queen Mary 2 depart. Lovely, lovely. It is 
actually an okay day today, kind of. We have been in a heat wave for a while um, and it has been raining, but it's been it's been okay today. I saw a friend today who was over from the US, which is always exciting. Um, I love just showing people around, even somewhere that's not really that exciting to me because to someone else it's really exciting. Uh, that's really cool. So I had a good, a good morning. Uh, when are you going on Royal Caribbean again? Love their brand and your reviews. I have no plans to go on Royal Caribbean at the minute. Again, uh, I did just get off Anthem of the Seas very, very recently. That's where my COVID came from, <laughs> if anyone's wondering. Um, so I have loads of Anthem of the Seas stuff on my website so much. Food reviews, cruise reviews, uh, cabin reviews. And I have the full kind of review of that on my website. If you go back to the last live stream, that was mostly about Anthem. So check that one out. I would like to um do one of the big big royal caribbean ships i feel like i'm missing that so i will do it at some point oh there are a few there are a few balconies but they're 700 to a thousand euros yeah that's why i didn't look at that i was looking at the 22 to 44 euros uh, kind of kind of thing it was interesting i mean we had like my bed folded down from the wall it was very much a ferry you know there was no storage because you just have one shelf you put your stuff on there because it's you're going on a ferry. <laughs> so it's not, it's not, it's not a luxury cruise. It's a ferry, but it's so interesting. Honestly, I cannot wait for you to see the video. Uh, oh, I answered this question somehow before I even read your question, but uh, it compared in size, you know, to a cruise ship cabin, but it's just very, very minimalistic, but it was clean. Um, it was really interesting because I had the window that looked down in the promenade. So I was just watching other people all the time, but I'll show you properly. I've edited that bit in my video, um, a very, very pink bathroom we had, but yeah, like clean is the main thing, clean, functional, um, didn't really sleep great because people were like running up and down the corridors at one in the morning, um, but we were on a ferry for a weekend, so it is what it is. Yeah, you managed to take food on board and uh, did you go back and get a kebab? So I got, a, I left a post somewhere on Facebook or something saying that I bought food on board. They don't, there's no security or anything. So why not just bring snacks? I went to Lidl and bought snacks. Of course. It, um, and that's fine, but bought a kebab on board and <laughs> was not allowed to do that. I do say that in my video, I say, you know, you can bring food on board as long as it's not a kebab. I couldn't remember where I saw this. I thought maybe I dreamed this comment, so I didn't call out the comment specifically. Uh, but when you see it, you will know, you will know for sure. Yeah, pink bathroom sounds fun. Yeah, you'll see. It reminded me a lot of the Costa Luminosa bathroom I had. I took a cruise on the Costa Luminosa. My hair, I look now, my hair was exactly the same in my Costa Luminosa videos because it must have been, you know, a m two months, I think, after I shaved my hair off the first time. And it, I look just like this, maybe a little bit longer. Um, this is flipped round for me, so that's a bit confusing. But yes, we had this very, very, very pinky, orangey, kind of bathroom. Well, I've got a cup of tea here. I'm going to try not to spill it because it's in this it's in this giant teacup. Um, I'm not going to tell you what this tea is. I'm going to hide the tea bag, but I think you guys can guess. If you know what flavor tea this is, uh, please drop it in the chat. <laughs> Let's do something like that. Oh, what's your favorite cruise line? Looked up. Oh, I lost it. I lost it. Uh, I looked up the best cruise lines and it says that it's celebrity. You cannot there's no one who can make a list that just says the best cruise lines because celebrity is the best cruise line for some people. Uh, it's not the best cruise line for me. I don't think I like it. You know, uh, I like it a lot, but if you're, you know, there's so many cruise lines and they all have different people who it's best for. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. For me, I, I mean, I've never been on a cruise where I didn't like it. As long as I've paid the right amount for what I get, same with this ferry, didn't pay much, didn't expect much, happy with what I got, you know, pleasantly surprised. On some cruises, I pay more, I get more. Um, celebrity are just, I would say they're not the best line for me because they're too expensive for me. And I've had conversations with celebrity when I've been on celebrity cruises and they say, okay, that's fair enough. You know, they're not trying to be a company for everybody, which is good. They know, they know who they're, you know, aiming at and it's a good product. Um, but you can't just say one cruise line is the best for everybody. It's impossible. Um, for me, you know, I like, 
I like the American cruise lines. I've cruised with Norwegian more than any other, but there's other cruise lines where I prefer a lot of things. You know, I really like Morella cruises. I like a cheap MSC cruise. Uh, I feel very at home on Princess cruises. I had a great Royal Caribbean cruise. I had great celebrity cruise. I've cruised with Viking. Love that. You know, uh, yeah. Peppermint tea. Yes, absolutely. Lisa has got it. Lisa, you know me well. Always peppermint tea every single day. Uh, it is a it is a giant cup. Uh, it's like the size of my head. <laughs> but it's good because it cools it down fast because it's such a big surface area. <laughs> um, oh, what do you think about Carnival taking so many cost of ships to make a new concept for the US market? They're taking Luminosa. Um, I cannot ever pronounce these. But I don't I don't know, you know, because we saw how MSC's uh MSC went over to the US and they kind of tried to make something different, you know, for the US market. And I think it backfired on them. Uh, whereas really, I think if they just stuck with this is what we are, where you can come if you like it or not, I think it would have done much better. And I don't know if maybe that will be the same. Um, we will see. We will see. I think it will be fun. It'll be fun either way, but not sure. <laughs> Sean says, here goes Lou with his commission for Viking. Um, Lou does not work for Viking, but he loves them. He loves them. He loves them. <laughs> um, oh, going on Carnival Vista. Very nice. After that, may do Norwegian Bliss. That sounds good. That sounds good indeed. Uh, love Disney. Love Norwegian Escape. Viking. <laughs> Very nice. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for your questions. I just, I could sit here the whole time and just read through the chat and not say anything. Slurp, 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 slurp. <laughs> oh my goodness. Paul and Carol on Beyond next week. Not cruised with celebrities since 2011. So it'll be interesting to see. You will have an amazing time on Beyond. I mean, I've never done any of those newer uh, celebrity ships. I was supposed to go on Beyond a, a long time ago, but it didn't happen. Um, I don't remember what happened, but it didn't happen. I never went on beyond. And it'll be amazing. For me, it's just kind of out, out of my price, really. It's just, yeah. It's more premium, more premium. Uh, have you seen Disney Wish? I've not seen much of Disney Wish. I know there's an event going on um, soon, but I was otherwise engaged, so I, I had to turn that one down. Um Fancy attire or casual, Queen, Man Queen Mary 2 or Carnival. I, I like both. You know, I like a very casual cruise. I like a formal cruise, but I need to be prepared for a tuna cruise. I need to know that that's what I'm doing so I can pack enough and preferably cruise in my home port so that I don't have luggage requirements because it takes a lot. Would you ever downsize and try a UK narrowboat trip? I follow a lady on TikTok who does narrowboat. She has the most amazing narrowboat. And she's like a solo female narrowboat cruiser. And it looks amazing. It looks really, really cool. So, yes, I suppose so. I suppose so. Uh, are you going on any group cruises or will you have your own group cruise we can join? I'm not planning on going on any, um, but I will let you know if that ever changes. At the moment, not right now. Um, <laughs> do you have the proper safety gear for that cup of tea maybe a life vest no i don't i'm very used to drinking a lot of tea a lot of tea um oh i had to get back to the uk for virgin says mum oh yes i remember it was when we went on scarlet lady and i just had a clash and i couldn't go on beyond that's it that's it uh, have you ever been on in a single cabin on a cruise? I have been in single cabins, but they've only ever been exactly the same as the regular cabin. So not like a solo cabin that was specifically designed for one person. Um, I mean, I've been in them, you know, on tours and things on the in the Norwegian suites, but I've never stayed in there myself. Um, and staying in a, you know, a normal inside cabin, it's a solo cabin, but it's the same as the other ones. It's fun. Um, I think they tend to do that when, you know, they didn't build a ship, especially, you know, I've done that on uh, Morella Explorer. I had a solo cabin. And when they built that, they didn't plan on putting solo cabins in. That wasn't really something that they thought about back then. I think that one's must be late 90s. It wasn't really a thing so much. So they just kind of convert regular cabins into solos. 
uh, what other holidays would you go on uh, going to Universal and Disney? See, I'm not a theme park person, to be honest. What I have always done before is I've done, you know, I love doing the cheap European city breaks. The fact I can get somewhere, you know, I saw the other day flights to Venice for like 30 pounds return, which is crazy, crazy cheap. I love doing those kind of city breaks, cheap ones. Um, I've done some, you know, like American road trips. They're always fun. But theme parks, not so much. And Disney probably, it's not on my to-do list. Like it seems quite overwhelming uh and the disney cruise i took was not my favorite so yes uh when you said a lorry earlier is that a bus yeah lorry like a truck <laughs> i forget that is not a thing oh no jim says oh i've lost jim jim where are you um got and tested positive for covid in paris oh dear that is not good i hope you get well soon <laughs> Yeah, Justin's in here. Justin loves the solo cabins, loves the NCL, loves it, loves it. Highly recommended. Um, yeah, Hillary says the age demographic is quite wide on Cunard these days. It's more wide than it ever has been, but I still think it's kind of, it's an older passenger demographic normally. It does depend on how long the cruise is, of course. I've taken, you know, shorter Cunard cruises. And if you take a two day, three day, there's going to be more young people on there. Um, but it is a traditional cruise line. It, there's, there's no getting, that's what they do well. It's a very traditional cruise line. Uh, what's the longest cruise you've taken? Only two weeks for us. Yeah, same, I think, 14, must be 14 nights. 14 nights, I think I've done. Um, I did a two-week Baltic cruise with Morella, and I did a two-week Baltic cruise <laughs> with Norwegian. I think that's the only two weeks I've ever done um, kind of on a ship at the same time. I did 13 days in Asia, but two weeks, Two weeks seems like a very long time for me. Normally, if I cruise, it's three nights, five nights, seven nights is, you know, good. Um, if I do 10 or 12 or something, it feels like I'm on for such a long time, such a long time. Uh, Tim says, what kind of entertainment was provided on the ferry? So it was it was interesting because there's kind of a daily schedule in an app. Um, there's only really one thing happening at a time, but it will be things that are language irrelevant. You know what I mean? So like, magicians or we had a guy who was making blowing bubbles which doesn't sound very cool but like very intricate bubbles putting people in bubbles stuff like that that anyone you know anyone can watch that um he did that in english actually and most people on board were from sweden or finland because that makes sense but all the crew spoke english that was not a problem um but you know karaoke singers all all, all kinds of you know normal things that you'll find. There's not like a theater. You're going to have a, like a Broadway show. Um, that's cool. Uh, thank you for your positive energy and cruise love. You are very welcome. It's very easy to be positive when things are exciting. And I find cruise is very, very exciting. Uh, Lisa says, are Morella good? I think Morella are good. Yes, I really like Morella. One of my favorite cruise lines. I have, they've got four ships and I've, I've done them all and I would do them again. Um, I like Morella. It's just no nonsense. You pay one price. Your drinks are included. You walk into the bar. There's just drinks on the table. You just pick them up. The entertainment is my favorite of all the cruise lines. Um, their ships are kind of smaller. They're from the 90s. They're ex-Royal Caribbean. Um, you know, they don't build their own ships. But I think they're really nice. Yeah, they're good. I mean, it's not, it's not going to be the most fancy. You know, it's not formal. It's not gourmet dining all the time. It's just... It's colourful, it's very British, um, and I feel very, you know, very at home on the Morella cruise. Uh, Ian says, like, like, like this live. Yes, please, like this live, this would be cool. Uh, Lisa says, Morella ships look quite small, which, put, which puts me off. My ideal size of a ship, I think, is the Morella, sh the Morella sizes. Um, I like the Morella ships because they have big atriums, they have big dining rooms that are split over multiple levels. There's no point really, you know, when you look at a ship, and it's big, there's just an extra like 10 levels of cabins in the middle. The actual spaces aren't that much different. Um, and sometimes it's nice not to have to walk, you know, nine flights of stairs to get back to your cabin. Yeah, ships are old but loved. I think they they gutted them completely when they took them over. And Morella haven't had them all for that long. Um, but yeah, I think it's my favorite entertainment. It's just so consistently, so consistently good. Uh, do you feel the movement more on a smaller ship? This is a debate, and I 
I don't think it's really to do with size at all. And I don't even think it's to do with age that much. I think if you go on a cruise ship that's from the mid 90s onwards, it's okay. If you go on a ship, I've been on some from the 80s, they feel, you feel the movement more on there, I think. Um, but some of the worst movement I've ever had on ships has been on the biggest ships, especially the ones that are like uh, some of the MSC ships and on Iona. I had really bad, really felt the movement on there. Um, so I don't think it's a case of like, you'll feel it on a small ship, not on a big ship. It's more to do with whatever the age of the ship is, whatever the, you know, all kinds of things. It's, it's not just about size. <laughs> size doesn't matter. Lol. Yes, Tim. <laughs> I'll just put that one up for you. Uh, have you done or do you know of cruises that are themed to particular cultures? Oh, like a Japanese experience. No, I've never heard of cruises like that. Uh, I don't I, I don't know how they would do that. Uh, do you think Morella might branch out and let non-UK passengers book? They do, but you have to not if you book it directly and you use PayPal, it's fine. You just need you can't use a US credit card. I don't know why you'd think they'd want, you know, more passengers. And whenever I talk to Morella, they're like, yeah, sure, we accept everybody. It's easy. And then I speak to Americans who are trying to book and it's like not letting them pay. Um, but using PayPal seems to be the, the go around and that that works fine, as far as I know. A <laughs> um, better road. Of all the cruises you've been on, I bet a rowing boat on a boating lake in your local park is a bit of a downgrade. I don't think I have been on any rowing boats or boating lakes in any local parks for many, many years, many years. I don't know. Probably the last time I went on a boat like that, I was a child, <laughs> probably. Um, oh, Pete says, sailing on MSC Virtuosa next weekend for four nights. Would you recommend paying for anything, specialty dining or shows, or is the free stuff enough to do for four nights? Um, I'm team, you don't need any more food, <laughs> to be honest. I have just put a post on my website comparing Virtuosa and Anthem of the Seas because when I was in Norway on Anthem of the Seas, my parents were on Virtuosa. And I've cruised on Virtuosa in the past too, so I've got kind of food reviews and things. Um, I don't think speciality dining, I would bother for four nights. That's, that's not very long. And for shows, if they have the whatever show they have that costs a bit extra in the big lounge at the back. I think that's good. I probably would do that. Uh, any word on next year's 90s and noughties cruise? I haven't heard anything, but I, I think they said July. So maybe soon, maybe soon. Uh, is P&O Ventura a good first ever cruise? Yes, I think so. Um, it's not it's not the most exciting, newest, biggest ship, but I think if you took a cruise on Virtuosa, you would know if you liked or didn't like cruising. Um, it's kind of more traditional on on some of the older P and O ships, but I ha I spent Christmas on 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 board, and um, I have a video about it, so you can check that out. But I liked it. I liked it. Um, would you know a good cruise line that does Japan? Which one were you on when you went? I missed the video on that trip you made on your feed. I was on Princess. Princess, I think they do a lot of cruises in that area. And um, they're very good. I will say one thing that kind of surprised me was the food was, it was not in any way Japanese food. <laughs> you know, it was very much um, British food, Australian food, American food, everything apart from kind of low it wasn't really local food we did have local acts on though to do uh, different dancing and things which was pretty cool but I that's that's the only thing that I just thought oh it's strange that they don't have you know local food on there but that suited me fine we can eat in port if we wanted to <laughs> Joe's first cruise was on Ventura when she was a new ship back in those days and got him hooked there you go so it has already worked um yeah, I think sometimes it's nice to do a ship like that that's not not huge for a first cruise because it's still going to feel huge to you. If it's your first cruise, it's going to blow your mind. You know, I took first time cruiser friends um, on the Morella cruise we did recently and they thought the ship was massive. You know, they were like, oh, so many stairs. This is nothing. <laughs> this is nothing at all. Um, Kevin says, oh, just wanted to thank you for replying. It proves you're one of life's good people. I try my best. Obviously, I get a lot of comments and a lot of questions, and I I feel bad when I can't reply to them all, but I I can't. I can't. I just can't, so I try my best. Um, 
what is the best insurance? MSC says, if it's not good enough, they won't let me on. So yes, so MSC, when you board an MSC cruise, they'll check your insurance and make sure you have enough cover for COVID related things. I think it would be quite hard to buy a cruise travel insurance policy that didn't include what MSC want. But when I took the first cruise on Virtuosa, there were people there who didn't have the right policy and they had to pay for an MSC one in order to get on the ship or another one. Um, I have a proper insurance guide on my website with all my recommendations. Click here, click here. These are the websites. This is what to look for. Uh, I would recommend checking that out. Use a comparison site if you're, you know, in if you're in the UK or you're in the US or wherever you are, uh, do a comparison. But you need, yes, you need you you need cruise travel insurance and make sure it is cruise travel insurance because uh, it drives me quite quite bananas when people say that they cruise without. Thank you, Tim. Yes, emmacruises.com, keeping things simple. Uh, did you feel much movement on a British Isles cruise? I always think the water will be rough. A lot of people say this, but I think it was all right. <laughs> like, I don't remember any bad weather. So I think that's a good sign. I've had worse weather in the Mediterranean. I've had worse weather going across to Norway. Um, yeah, no, I think because I've only done British Isles cruises in summer, I guess, maybe. Maybe that's why. Um, yeah, Craig said, had difficulty boarding Grandiosa in Barcelona, even though I bought their insurance. Yes, they're very hot on it. A lot of cruise lines don't check insurance, um, but have it. It's not, worth, it's not worth the risk at all. I mean, my insurance policy, uh, mine's slightly more expensive because it's business policy, business cruise. <laughs> um, but even still, it was only like £100 a year for me. And I got I don't know, 75 pounds back for one missed port. So if I miss another port in the next year, I'm quids in from my insurance. Uh, have you been to Malta? And if yes, what ship? I stayed in Malta on land, not on a ship, but I have also been on ships uh, on MSC uh, Meravilia and Meravilia twice. <laughs> Meravilia twice. I think that's it maybe uh, for Malta. I love Malta. Malta's lovely. Um, Oh, William says, my first cruise was in 1997 on a cruise ship built in 1969. Uh, scared my family for a while. <laughs> that is fair enough. Uh, 50 kilos of tea to fill the teacup fund. Thank you very much, Joe. My teacup, my tea's going cold because I can't stop talking. I can literally hide behind this thing. <laughs> Uh, Thomas says, have you heard about catios? I have. I have a friend who has made a catio, actually, for a cat that doesn't go out. Uh, Hudson's an indoor or outdoor cat, whatever he wants, he can wander off. I still have this Hudson cat balloon, you know? I had this when I did my head shave, and it's it's still kind of going strong. It's a bit creepy, but uh, I keep blowing more air into it, and it's fine. Um, as a retiree, I have a travel insurance included uh, with my insurance package that includes COVID coverage. Is that enough or do I need more? Um, when you say insurance package, is that kind of medical insurance? I don't know anything about medical insurance. We don't need it in the UK. We have um, our national health service here, so we don't buy insurance. But you need it to be cruise specific, cruise specific travel insurance. So I would guess no, um, unless I specifically found out yes, but you would need to ask them. Normally, normally not. Would you recommend a two week cruise for a first timer? Or would you recommend a shorter one? I normally recommend a week. I think a week is a good kind of middle ground. Um, it's long enough that you can get into the flow. If you do a two or three night, it's good fun, but it's not really, it's not really a real cruise. Um, it's very different. And two weeks is quite a long time. It feels like a long time to me. So I normally say seven days. Uh, is Hudson named after the river? I don't know. I didn't name Hudson. I have no idea where his name came from. I don't know who his original owners were, his original uh, parents. But they named him Hudson. I saw him with that name and I kept it. I kept it. Uh, Lisa says, good old NHS. We are lucky. We are so unbelievably lucky. Yes. Um, Ken says, are you continuing to keep your hair short? Short uh, than I had it before? Yes, because I only grew it that long to cut it off. Uh, this short? No, <laughs> definitely not this short. This is so weird to me. I just want it to go, I just want to fringe back, you know what I mean? And I, I've been wearing a hat for hours trying to keep my hair down so I could come on this live stream without my hair going in all kinds of directions. Um, 
Hudson Rock says Thomas, he does. He does absolutely. If anyone has seen this this Lightyear movie, uh, socks, the cat socks are there is absolutely uh, it's just like Hudson. So cute. Uh, Tim says, were you able to get Pepsi Max and cookies on Symphony? I didn't have Pepsi Max or cookies on Symphony, no. Um, but I had a lot of Coke Zero, which is a close second. And I, I worked out a cheap, a cheap way to get it cheap. Um, didn't have any cookies though, I don't think. I didn't really eat anything. I just ate sweets, <laughs> sweets and burgers and chips mostly. Uh, Hudson is a cute name for a cat. I think so too. I saw him on a poster. He's a cat's protection cat. So I saw him on a poster and he looked so cute and it said Hudson on it. Um, and then I went to pick him up, which was adorable, adorable. Um, but yeah, I think so. When I hear of a person called Hudson, I'm like, that's a cat name <laughs> to me, to me now. Um, <laughs> uh, do you think there should be a similar ferry service in the British Isles? I don't know. I'm not sure that it would work so well. Um, have you tried to have you tried Pepsi Max Lime? Yes, I tried this in the airport when I was coming back because I'd gone a couple of days without Pepsi. Yes, I did. I did have that. Um, nice, 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 nice. Uh, can you show us your amazing Hudson? If you rewind the video back to the beginning, you will see him. He is at the beginning of the video, but he's gone now, and I can't, I can't make him get back. Uh, what about tipping? Were there really times where you need, were there really many times that you needed extra cash? Says Tim. Are you, are you talking about the ferry trip? Because in Sweden and Finland are very, very similar to the UK. You do not need to tip anybody for anything. If you do, it's nice, fair enough, but you don't need to tip anybody for anything. You know, um, if you go to a restaurant. And it's fine. You can just leave. That's okay. That's, that's fine. If you want to tip ten percent or twenty or something, good for you. That's cool. I do if the service is good, but you don't need to. You really don't need to. And I would say cash was really not a thing so much on this cruise. It was very encouraged to use your cards. We use contactless payments for everything. I didn't use cash at any point. <laughs> Holy cow! That's quite a cup. I don't know how to give you like a. Does that look smaller? Because you are closer to the cup. <laughs> closer to the cup. It does make me completely disappear, though. Ferry trip, yeah. Um, how do the soft drinks, Coke, etc., refills work on MSC with the premium drinks package? Are there freestyle machines? No, you have to go to the bar every single time. Uh, no freestyle machines. But on MSC, you do get cans of stuff. It's not the... Um, sometimes it's the fountain soda, but they will just give you a can. So that's pretty nice. That is pretty good. Um, ooh, adopted three little mate kittens. or oh, adorable. Adorable. Um, yeah, so Sue says, what are your thoughts on PO Cruises dropping testing on Iona for five weeks? I think it's an interesting experiment. And I think I think we're heading into the time now where we're gonna see testing stopped. Um yeah, I think I think we're gonna see the cruise line saying that soon. Um it doesn't really make sense to keep only that part at this point when you're, you know, you've everyone's flying on a plane, no masks, no distancing, nothing. Everyone's going on a cruise, no nothing. To only have that part there, I don't know that it makes that much sense. So I think that they will probably drop it off soon um, and they'll see how this goes. Uh, what are your thoughts on Celestial Crystal? I don't know anything about Celestial Crystal, but I have taken a Celestial Cruise on... Um, a different one, <laughs> a different one. And it was very good. If you if you really do want to, I do have videos about it on my channel, but it's it's the beginning of my channel. So you have to scroll back quite a long way. Um, but interesting, yes, I'd love to go back and cruise with Celestial again on Crystal. I think that would be really cool. But we just had such a busy cruise on Celestial. We had two ports per day. Uh, I think in a, we did like a four or five night cruise and visited like eight or nine different places. It was crazy. It was crazy, crazy, crazy. Uh, what do you think of the food on Celebrity? Celebrity know their food. Very, very good. Their buffet, the best buffet I've ever been in. Um, I will say it's kind of the same as Royal Caribbean when it comes to like vegetarian and vegan food. They're a bit, I don't know, there's better options. You'd be better, you know, on P&O or MSC. But <laughs> yeah, Cruise Boys say, Emma, you cruise on Celestial Olympia. Olympia, that is the one. Um, which was an ex-Royal Caribbean ship from the 1980s. It's the oldest cruise ship I've been on, I think. And it was really interesting because it was like, you would just walk along the corridor and then all of a sudden it would be like half a step up, just for no reason, or something, and then sideways. Like, it wasn't very, I don't know. 
it felt like it was from the 1980s. <laughs> it was interesting. Uh, what are your thoughts on NCL Prima? MCL Prima looks amazing. And NCL Prima sure does look out of my budget. <laughs> out of my budget. Uh, it's not a cheap cruise. Uh, not a cheap cruise, but very, very cool. I'd love to cruise on her one day, for sure. One, one day, one day. Uh, yes, taking a cruise out of Barcelona in September, not having to test would remove so much stress. It is a lot of stress. And it is odd because, you know, if, say, you went to Barcelona, tested positive, you can't go on the cruise. But I don't think in Barcelona they have any rules about COVID anymore. If you come, you know, from the US to England to go on a cruise and you test positive, you can't go on the cruise. But you can still wander everywhere in England without a mask. There's no quarantine or anything on land. So it doesn't really make too much sense. Ooh, Jay says, only been on Disney and looking to try a different line. What line has your favorite island stop similar to Castaway Key. Interesting. I think I would be wanting to try the Royal Caribbean private island or maybe Norwegian, Royal or Norwegian or MSC. You know, I'm quite interested with MSC. Maybe MSCs isn't really the same, um, but I've never been to Castaway Key, but I think I'd be looking at either Royal Caribbean or Norwegian. Uh, thank you for the super chat, Jay. I don't know if I said that one, but it's... oh, Tom says Celestial Crystal is an old Cilia line ship really interesting that's very cool uh, thank you so much jay um i saw a picture of myself my dad sent it to me of me on an ncl cruise in 2008 or 2009 when i was 13 or 14 and in the background there is this ship that i was on last week and i never would have thought i i had no interest in i didn't know a cruise youtuber was a thing or a cruise writer or anything that wasn't didn't cross my mind at all. Had never crossed my mind. Um, it would be about, I don't know, eight years later or something that I'd start my website and my channel. Uh, any carnival updates for you? I have booked a carnival cruise and uh, I will let you know more about it when I can. So very, very exciting. Um, Disney is great if you're under 12. Uh, Sean says, thank you for answering my question on Celestial, booked for Christmas 2023. Amazing. There's some really good Celestial cruise deals, like price-wise, unbeatable. Uh, they're a Greek cruise line. They cruise around the Greek islands and they do multiple ports per day there on these ships that are mostly from the 80s, I think. Um, that's the thing. I think that's the, they're not the most exciting ships. You know what I mean? It's more of a uh, a way to see things like, there wasn't a big theater on our ship. There wasn't a theater at all, but there was like a big lounge. So it's kind of just a different type of cruise, but they all include drinks um, as standard and the prices are pretty good, pretty interesting. Uh, will I get disapproving looks if I take Tupperware into the breakfast buffet to get food and take out for lunch during the day when in port? You may do. What I would do is put it on a plate, take it to my room and then put it in the Tupperware, <laughs> to be quite honest with you. That's what I would do. Uh, Cruise boys say that Josh is under 12 and thinks Disney is too much. Yeah, I think I'm quite like Josh, <laughs> to be honest. Um, suggestions for a first winter cruise. It depends where in the world you want to go. You know, I've done some great winter cruises in the Mediterranean, the Canary Islands, um, over the US. You can go anywhere in the world. So I need more specifics on that question, please. Uh, for the 90s cruise, uh, what was the biggest surprise, surprise for your friends who had never cruised? You have to remember that my friends that I took on this cruise, they have known me since I started my website. And so they've listened to me tell them everything about cruise ships. There's no, they knew more than 99% of the people taking that cruise. Uh, I think really it was probably just the si the size until you stand next to a ship and you look at it you can't really get an idea of scale they're really impressed with the food all the food that they could just eat you know i had messages from my friends when we came back being like i miss food <laughs> um yeah i think they're very clued up though very very clued up <coughs> oh emma says uh been on two week two week long cruises this year um i couldn't work out if i was two week long two you know English is really hard. Um, need to need your help to persuade my husband to go for two weeks to the Canary Islands on Azura in December. I don't know that 
my answer is going to convince you because I took a cruise like this to the Canaries on P&O from Southampton. And I don't know if this cruise, does this go from the UK or not? Because I did that from the UK in December. We had terrible weather. It was really seasick. We had like three different storms. And if I could do it again, I don't know that I would ever choose that itinerary again. I didn't choose that one, to be fair. Um, the one I chose was cancelled because of COVID. That was a substitute. But all of those sea days in December, the weather can be quite rough. I don't know that I'd recommend that. If you are going down to the Canary Islands, though, for two weeks, absolutely amazing. So, yes, I don't know if that's the answer that you wanted, but the Canary Islands are amazing in December. So warm. I did a Christmas Canary Islands cruise, and I was wearing a T-shirt, like, without a jumper or a coat on Christmas. It was crazy. It was interesting, too, because I I'm so used to a cold Christmas, and they would still have, you know, the Christmas decorations would still be um like snowmen and things and they don't get snow there so it's just interesting for me to see that stuff um oh oh jim says how is the uptake on your cruise course since you updated it it is good i am planning on making a change to it because a lot of the feedback i've had is like this is so much more information than i ever plan you know i ever thought would be in here um so i'm thinking of changing it to instead of being everything in a lump which right now is everything I know in a lump in video lessons. Um, I'm going to change it to be kind of a course that's over maybe two or three months with like office hours drop-ins with me. So I will do a Zoom, you know, we'll do chapter one and then a Zoom and then chapter two and then a Zoom so we can discuss those. Uh, and I will be relaunching that soon, I think. But yes, that's exciting. I'm looking forward to that. I love, you know, working with the people who are in there. So being able to see them in kind of a different way will be cool, I think. Um, <laughs> hello, James from the Loka fam and an Emma Light. Thank you very much. It's very nice to see you. The Loka fam, um, Tony's Loka fam, you guys are the best. We have a massive crossover. If you look at on YouTube, you can see um, viewers of your channel also watch and what channels they watch. Tony is like Tony, 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 Tony. Don, Gary, Tony, Tony, Don, Gary, Alana, Sherry, <laughs> Matt, over and over again, the same people, which is cool. You can see, you know, I've been looking at the non-cruise channels because I'm interested in, you know, what are you guys watching outside of non-cruising? And it tends to be things like uh, trains and aeroplanes and, you know, the um, I took the longest train trip ever or the most expensive plane ever, things like that that are just travel random interest. Uh, so I think we have a lot of people who, you know, maybe they like planes, maybe they like trains, maybe they don't like any of them, uh, but they're just thinking, what is a cruise ship like? Like I have that audience, which is really, really cool. Really, really cool. Um, any tips for cruising solo outside of cost savings, says Luke. I think if you can, um, if you can pick a cruise line like Norwegian that has a solo specific lounge, it's so much easier to get to know other people because by the fact that you're in there means that you're solo. So it kind of gets over that awkward, you know, if you do want to make friends with other solos. Um, if not, I would say go to the solo meetups. They normally have them at the beginning of the cruise, but you can still, you know, all the time I end up talking to people at things like trivia, uh, if you go to game shows, stuff like that. If you, of course, want to make friends with people. I know some people cruise solo and that's not the point of the cruise. Um, and that sounds really good. You know, just a cruise where you can do whatever you like at any point. Um, sounds amazing. Sounds amazing. Yep, trains tick, airplanes tick. I knew it. Yes, yes, yes. Interesting. Yeah, see? Exactly. Popped up on my feed after I started following flying reviews. Exactly. There's a whole world out there of things that I didn't even know existed. Um, but it's very, very cool. Very, very cool. Oh, my goodness. Lauren is an Australian living in Dubai. I cannot even imagine. We have had like a heat wave here this week and they're talking about us breaking the records for the hottest weather in the UK in 40 years and the hottest ever recorded weather in 40 years is 36 degrees, which I, please someone else, translate 36 Celsius. Um, but in Dubai, I mean, it's like 45 degrees. Oh, more maybe. I don't even know. Cannot imagine. I think... I would really struggle to have the energy to do anything. So much of my life is based around, I don't know, walking around. Just be a different way of life, different. Um, yeah, 
No, not sure I'm not sure I'm set up for that. Uh, which cruise line do you think has the best gyms? I could completely unqualified. I've never, never, no, literally never been in a gym on a cruise ship other than for a tour or to look around. I quite like the um, exercise classes, you know, I'll do Zumba, things like that. But a gym, no, 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 no. I used to, you know, I used to do ship tours and things and I would make an effort to film everything, you know, ship uh, gyms and spas and stuff. But I don't go in those. I have nothing to add, you know, about gyms. I have all the facts about gyms. I have content on my website about gyms. But as far as my own personal opinion, no. <laughs> Next video should have the gym, library, and laundry, says Tim. That'll be a very quick video from me. Very quick. Uh, long time no chat. No, it shouldn't be too long. Yes, Don. There we go, Don. Talking about you, Don. Don, your audience, mine and Tony's. Very close-knit, I think, which is really cool. Uh, watched a flight video that cost $31,000 one way. Exactly. I watched one about, it must have been Emirates first class, where you could have a shower. That was the thing. You can shower in the sky. Everyone gets five minutes, I think, of water in the, in the shower. And it looked amazing. Like, it's so much bigger than my bathroom at home. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Uh, Mark says, am I hearing gin instead of gym? Maybe that's what I hear too, maybe. Yeah, ask the cruise boys about the gyms. They go to the gyms. They're very, very good. But no, 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 no. Oh, mate, this is amazing. I fell asleep watching van life videos and woke up to Gary talking about cruises. That's how I ended up on this side of YouTube. That is amazing. That is what is cool. That is what is cool about YouTube. You can find things that you didn't even know existed, you know. We're all here in the cruise phase, which is so cool. Um, oh, Gregory, thank you so much for my super chat. And he says, Tuesday near San Francisco, it was 40 C. We're not, we're not set up for that here. We don't have air conditioning, nothing, nothing, nothing like that, that. We do in offices, you know, or shopping centers, but in homes, I don't have air conditioning here. So yeah, we just lay around. We don't like it at all. Uh, went on your channel and ended up booking a cruise. Ha ha ha. Amazing. I love it. I love it very much. It has nearly been an hour, guys. So I'm going to wrap this up in a minute. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to be here next week at the normal time. So that's nice and easy to remember. Uh, Boston Bobby says, is the Queen Mary 2 the best ship for a transatlantic? See, I have had many thoughts about transatlantics. And if you asked me, you know, if you asked me six months ago, or maybe if you asked me a year ago, I would have said, yes, I really want to do a transatlantic. Yes, really do. Then if you asked me just after my Christmas cruise, I would have said, no way. I don't want to do a transatlantic because we had four sea days where I was quite seasick towards the end and I just wanted to get off. It was disgusting. Um, so then I would have said no, never. But then <laughs> I took a cruise on Queen Mary 2 and it was so stable. It was absolutely crazy. So now my answer is I would like to do a transatlantic, but I would only do it on Queen Mary 2. But then also, that's what I say. But then also, you know me, if something really cheap came up, I'm sure that I would do it. I'm sure I would do it. I have been looking at like cargo cargo cruises, cargo shipping containers. Um, you don't go in the shipping container to sleep, but I think that will be so cool. I'll do that at some point. But yes, Queen Mary 2, I think, is the way to go. Uh, we're interested in flying to the UK, spending a few days and then hopping on a transatlantic back. See, that's the, that's the way that you'd want to do it, I think. Um, for me, I suppose... I don't know. It's just it's just the luggage for a Cunard cruise. You know, I need these formal dresses and a formal dress is like four of those in a suitcase and that's my suitcase done, <laughs> which is not how I normally pack. I pack very, very light. I took the smallest bag on, on my ferry trip. Um, and I'm so glad I did. I didn't have to, you know, I didn't pay for luggage. We spent a lot of time. We had a day before and a day at the end in Stockholm. So we were walking around and we could look and say, oh, the cruise port's 45 minutes away. We'll just walk there then that's fine got my little backpack on and it was really nice it would have been so annoying to have to get taxis or something um with the suitcase so yeah very very glad um <laughs> thank you so much everybody for coming to this live stream i love these this is like the best wind down for the week from me just to get to chat to everybody so i am always here if i'm not on a cruise if i'm on a cruise i'm not here but if i'm on land i will be here for this hour every single week and i appreciate you if you pop in you, you don't have to stay but 
you know, it's it's so nice when people just pop in and say hello. Um, yes. Okay. Yes. Emma says Friday after work cruise escapism chat. That's exactly what it is. Yes. Um, thank you so much, everybody. I will talk to you uh, next week. Before that, though, I will have my video out about my ferry adventure. And I'm, I'm hoping early next week, I think I've probably got a day or two more editing. The title's done, the thumbnail's done, everything is ready to go. I'm so excited for you to see it. Um, but probably the start of next week, I think. Thank you so much, everybody. I will see you soon. Bye, guys.